Hello guys, welcome back to Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss one of the important topic known as the factor of safety. So I will explain this topic with the help of an example in order to understand it easily. So what is factor of safety? To define the factor of safety, factor of safety, it is the ratio of the capacity of material to the demand on material. So if we define the factor of safety, so it is the ratio of capacity of material, that how much the material has strength to the demand on material. It means that how much load is coming on the material. Later on, I will explain with the help of an example, so it will be more easily understandable. So this is the definition of the factor of safety that the capacity of material to the demand on material. The ratio of these two uh, terms will be known as the factor of safety. How much your material has capacity to take the load and how much load demand is coming on your material. So the ratio of these two uh, terms will be known as the factor of safety. And we can also define the factor of safety by another way. That factor of safety is equal to the the strength of the material this is the second definition of the factor of safety it is equal to the strength of the material divided by the stress on material so it is the same definition like the capacity of material that how much your material has strength to take the load and how much the load is coming on the material the ratio of these two uh, a terms is known as the factor of safety. Now it should be kept in mind that factor of safety should always be greater than the one. It means greater than the one means that the capacity of the material should always be greater than the demand on material or in another way the strength of the material should always be greater than the stress on material. So then we have factor of safety greater than one. If our numerator factor is greater than denominator then we will have the factor of safety greater than one so in both cases the capacity of the material or the strength of the material should be greater than the demand on material or the stress on material it will be more easy to understand when I explain this with an example so now let's consider a simple example of the beam that this is any beam simply supported beam and there is a uniformly distributed load acting on this beam. And let's suppose the capacity of this beam, this is the capacity of the beam, and let's suppose the capacity of this beam to take the load, is, it is just an example to understand the factor of safety. So the capacity of the simply supported beam is let's suppose 200 ton. This is just an example, otherwise we mostly take the capacity of the beam in terms of the movement. But here just to explain this factor of safety, we assume that its capacity to take the load is 200 ton. And the load coming on this beam, let's suppose the demand on beam is 100 ton. The capacity of the beam is 200 ton. In the demand, the load coming on this beam is let's suppose 100 ton. So now the factor of safety will be equal to the factor of safety will be equal to the capacity of the beam, capacity of the beam divided by the demand on the beam. As we define here, capacity of material divided by demand on material. So here we have beam. So here I replace the material with the beam. So capacity of the beam is 200 ton and demand on the beam is 100 ton. So if we divide these two values, the 10 ton will be cancelled. So factor of safety has no unit. So it will become 2. It means if we divide 200 by 100, we get 2. So the factor of safety for this beam, we can say it is 2. 2 means that the capacity of the beam is 2 times higher than the demand on the beam. So we have factor of safety 2. 
So factor of safety is 2 means that the capacity of this beam is 2 times higher than the load coming on this beam. That's why it is 2. In the similar way, we can also say that the strength of the beam, let's suppose, is 200 ton and the stress on the beam is, let's suppose, 100 ton. This is just an example. Otherwise, the stress is expressed in the unit of megapascal. Similarly, the stress is also ex expressed in megapascal. So if you explain that this beam has a uh, stress, the strength of the beam is, let's suppose, a 200 megapascal. And the stress on the beam, on this beam is, let's suppose, stress is, let's suppose, 100 megapascal. So again, we have a factor of shifting. Strength of the beam divided by stress of the beam, which is 200 by 100. So we get 2. So again, we have a factor of safety 2. So in this way, we can define the factor of safety that it is the ratio of the capacity or the strength of the material to the demand or the stress on the material. Now, in case of the ductile structure members, for example, mostly in case of the slaves or beams, we have low factor of safety. Low factor of safety. Because the ductile member shows the failure before it fails. Before it collapses, it shows the behavior of failing. That's why we have low factor of safety. While in case of the brittle members, like in case of the column, which is a brittle member, so we have high factor of safety. Because the higher factor of safety is because the column, when collapses, it directly collapses. It is a compressive member or it, we can say it shows high brittleness. So it shows catastrophic behavior when failing. So it does not show that uh, they have high ductility and people cannot run out from the building when failing the column. Because it doesn't show any sign of failure when it fails. So that's why we provide the higher factor of safety. And it should be kept in mind that when we have more uh, ductile structure and, and more ductile structure members, the factor of safety should be always low. While in case of the more brittle structures, structural members, so we have more factor of safety. It should be kept in mind and factor of safety should always be greater than the one in order to keep this keep the structure safe hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos thank you for watching our video